This is the LG 40 inch ultra wide curve WP95C monitor. And I highly recommend you guys purchase this monitor instead of the Apple Studio display. Here's why. First and foremost, there's really nothing wrong with the Apple Studio display. It's just a bit overpriced for what it is. It is missing certain features such as ProMotion at that price point, um, HDMI ports, it would have been nice to see that. And even having little tidbits such as local dimming or even HDR support, $1,600 starting and not have an HDR display. It, it's kind of mind boggling if you ask me. And speaking of configuration and that starting price point, the stand. It's only a tilt stand. You have to opt for the tilt and height adjustable stand, which is gonna bring the monitor price up to $2,000. And then let's say you want the nano texture, an additional, you gotta pay up. And the display itself can actually be a computer itself. It has that A13 Bionic chip. It has onboard storage, 64 gigabytes to be exact. It has a built-in webcam, built-in speakers. It has all the bells and whistles to be an all-in-one computer, but it is not a computer. You will still need to pair up your, um, your Mac. It works on Windows too as well, but if you want all the bells and whistles, it's highly recommended to use a Mac. So you can use the Mac Studio, which I also have in the background, or you can use a MacBook, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro. But on the other side of the coin, this, the LG 40 Ultra Wide Curve Monitor, offers HDMI, a display port, Thunderbolt 4, as we mentioned earlier, and it has a headphone jack as well too. The steel display doesn't even have a headphone jack. And more prominently, this is also a 5K display. So same exact screen resolution as the Apple Studio display, just the PPI is a smidge lower. This is 140 PPI with 300 nits of brightness, opposed to the Studio display, I give credit where it's due, it excels in this department. The nits is 600 and the PPI is 218. I don't know about you guys, but 300 nits is the standard when it comes down to monitors and I'm perfectly fine with 300 nits. And to start the show, this is a 40 inch ultra wide monitor. So you have more room to work with. If you're a content creator, you understand how easily cramped up the screen could be. So with the ultra wide, it solves that issue. So you have your file browser on one side, have your transitions, your effects, your video scopes, your Luma, all that stuff without feeling cramped up or is just like everything is all squished up together. That ultra wide just gives you a massive canvas. And even if you edit in photos in Photoshop, to be able to see more of the substance that you're editing, the ultra wide is the way to go. And once you go ultra wide, I wouldn't say it's hard to go back to a regular 16 by nine monitor. It's just you much more prefer an ultra wide just because of the canvas. You have more room to work with. Now I've been using the LG 38 inch ultra wide monitor for two years now, ever since my building my dream room video. If you guys missed that video, I highly encourage you guys to watch it. It's just an absolute beast for video editors. You can see your entire timeline without zooming in and out every five seconds. It is an absolute time saver, could potentially speed up your workflow. And as you guys can see, I have them both stacked up on top of each other because, well, I still have my 38 inch on the top while I have the 40 inch ultra wide on the bottom. The top ultra wide is a 2K display while this is a 5K display on the bottom. So I use the top monitor for surfing things on the web, having a file, the finder. So I can just click and drag from the top and drag it into the bottom where Final Cut Pro is at. So it is pretty cool. So I have a dual ultra wide setup be on the lookout for a desk setup. Now, when I was editing my building my dream room video, I still had a 2015 MacBook Pro. So I used an iMac Pro so much more faster, but going from an ultra wide to a iMac, everything just feels so scrunched up. And the easy fix would be buy another studio display, but come on guys, who's spending another $1,600 on the studio display? <laughs> that's gonna raise the total up even more expensive than this. Now, yes, this monitor is $2,000, but why spend $2,000 for a tilt height adjustable stand on one screen that is 27 inches while you can get a 40 inch ultra wide, you're spending the price one time and you don't have to worry about the space. Don't be like me, this is just overkill having two ultra wides on top of each other. Once you go to an ultra wide, it's like, uh, the studio display is okay. So yeah, both monitors are extremely expensive, but I'd rather spend 1,700 and have all the bells and whistles having to stand 
and not no ordinary stand it actually is height adjustable tilt all that good stuff and you have the visa mount support versus the apple one you have to pick and choose which one you set up uh, why did apple do that why couldn't apple architect have an interchangeable stands why why apple couldn't do that why apple couldn't architect a universal customizable stand now if i was you guys and you really want the studio display go with the visa mount because it offers so much more flexibility and the price is still the same now the ultra wide you're missing a webcam a microphone but you do have speakers i'll give credit where it's due the studio display sounds way better so guys i pretty much conclude today's video i'll throw in the description to both the apple studio display and the lg ultra wide links will be down below and thank you guys so much for watching make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on and comment down below what you guys think and until next time guys have a simple day peace